Howdy, April Pregal. It's Miss Kosh. I am continuing with Mr. Passwater's um, 315 notes, um, and now we're getting to average rate of change. So, um, we learned in the past that the average rate of change, it's the change in output values over the change in input. Um, we may think rise over run, we may think change in y over change in x, but a nice way to think about that, it's the output divided by, um, the change in the output divided by the change in the input. So, basically on this one, we could say it's, um, well, it's f of, how did I do it? I called it in class f of um, uh, theta 2 minus f of theta 1 over theta 2 minus theta 1. Or I also said, well, this would be r2 minus r1 is the radius minus uh, theta 2 minus theta 1. Okay, so consider this. What is the average rate of change over the interval there to there? All right, okay, so let's see. f of pi over 2 is equal to, when I plug in pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so 3. And then f of, because it was 3 minus 0, um, f of pi, um, cosine of pi is, my brain just stopped, cosine of pi is negative 1, times negative 3 is positive 3, plus 3 is 6. Okay, so now we're doing our average rate of change is equal to the, well, f of pi over 2. Nope, you know what, I'm going to do f of pi. I, I just want to deal with positive things. I like to stay positive. <laughs> okay, that was a bad attempt at humor. And then pi minus pi over 2. I can be funny. That just wasn't it. Um, okay, so 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 over pi minus pi, um, pi over 2 is pi over 2. So we don't leave fractions in a fraction. This is 3 is being divided by, by pi over 2, which means we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And so the answer is 6 over pi. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so we have this of rows and they give us the equation and I agree, this equation matches that graph. Um, how do I know? Um, two tells me there's four petals. Sine tells me it's not gonna be on the line um, theta equals zero because sine of zero is zero. So it has to go here and then come out. Um, okay, on which of the following intervals is the average rate of change equal to zero? Oh, okay, well, let's see, pi, to three, so if pi over four is gonna be here, so this right here, we start at zero. When I plug in pi over four, I get pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one, that's three. Okay, so this is f of pi over four. That might be helpful to hang on to for a minute. Um, and then where do we go next? Then three pi over four, when I plug in three pi over four, I get sine of three pi over two, um, which is negative one, so this is negative three. So three pi over four, but instead it's negative, so this, it started here, it curved up and around, and it came down to here. This is f of 3 pi over 4. So we started here, do, 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 do. we curved down here, here's 3 pi over 4. And now, let's see, okay, what did they say? Then we, then we want to look at 5 pi over 4. Um, 2 times 5 pi over 4 gives us 5 pi over 2. So this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. Um, sine of 5 pi over 2 is equal to... 1, yes, okay, is equal to 1 times 3 is 3. So at this one, 5 pi over 4 is here, and we, we do end up going, doo -doo -doo. oh no, 5 pi over 4 is here. Oh my goodness. Okay, 5 pi over 4 is here. We have a radius of positive 3, so this is now where we are at f of 5 pi over 4. And then what happens? So we started here. We went do 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 do. We got up to this pi over four. Then we came down around the three pi over four was actually negative, which put us in quadrant four. We kept curving around. Five pi over four was positive, which does keep us in five pi over four's quadrant, which was quadrant three. Then we curve around. Okay, and we're gonna get up here to seven. This is gonna be seven pi over four, because f of seven pi over four. Um. So this is saying sine of 7 pi over 2. Well, where is 7 pi over 2? 1 pi over 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 2 is coterminal to 3 pi over 2. Sine of 7 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So this gives us a negative. So up here, okay, 7 pi over 4 is quadrant 4, but since it's a negative radius, we're up here. So what did we do? We started here, we came around, we curved this way, we kept curving, 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 we got to here. We curve, we curve, we come to, this is five pi over four, we curve here, seven pi over four, and then we get back to two pi. Okay, so now, where is the average rate of change equal to zero? So we want a slope of zero, right? That's what we're thinking about. A slope of, of zero means that, um, I, I always do, uh, 
And then I taught algebra one, I would do a little man and I would make him walk on that. And I'm like, oh, look, the little man can walk a slope of zero. And then I would talk about if the slope is undefined, what happens to the little man? The little man goes flat. And then I would have fun and make it like red underneath and talk about how I should have gotten parent permission before doing something so violent because I, I am funny. Okay, so we need a slope like this. So from uh, pi over four to three pi over four, no, that's an undefined slope. Uh, three pi over four to five pi over four, that's here. Okay, that seems to be my answer. Let's check the others just in case. Three pi over four to seven pi over four, that would have been this, no good. Pi over four to seven pi over four, um, that looks like the same. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why it's this one and not this. I don't know why it would be one of these two. Or maybe, maybe one of them's negative. Oh, you guys. Okay, maybe we should play with this a little bit more closely. Um, if I do... Okay, sorry. Like I said, I didn't think through this before I started. Um, okay, so seven, oh, f of five pi over four minus f of three pi over four. Um, well, zero is zero. Well, let me, let me check, let me check. Um, and then this becomes uh, five minus three is two, uh, so this is pi over two. And, um, okay. So what was at five pi over four, we had a, this is five pi over four is a positive three. Three pi over four, the, when I plug in three pi over four, I got negative three, so it's minus a negative three. Oh, that's why it's wrong, you guys. Okay, did you catch what I did there? This is six divided by, so times two over pi. This is 12 over pi for the average rate of change. Oh, that's clever. Um, however, let's check the other one. Let's, let's see if, if I'm doing, f of seven pi over four minus f of pi over four divided by, okay, subtract these at six pi over four, which is three pi over two. Seven pi over four, what was my, my value here? Seven pi over four, that was a negative three minus, um, well, pi over four has a, has a f of pi over four is three. But a negative three minus three, that's also negative six pi over six. Well, anybody seeing my mistake? If so, comment below. Let me think about it for a little bit longer before I just give up and go look at the answer key. Uh, uh, if I plug in the R value is positive or negative depending on where I want to be. Okay, we think this is wrong because f of five pi over four was positive three. F of three pi over two was negative three. When I do positive three minus a negative three, that's positive six. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have eliminated these guys. Okay, okay. Um, Y'all, this is fun. Okay, what would this one have been? This was a negative three and this was a positive three, but a negative three minus a positive three is still negative six. Okay. Um, here we had a negative three. This one had a, oh, I think it's this guy. I think it's this guy. Let's let's double check. Okay, um, you had the fun of watching me think through something I'd never done ever in my entire life. Okay, um, wasn't that thrilling? Aren't you so happy you stuck around? Okay, um, seven minus three is four pi over four is just pi. Okay, so seven pi over four. At seven pi over four, this should have been in this quadrant, but it's negative, so that's a negative three minus, at three pi over four, we should have been in this quadrant, um, but it's negative, so minus a negative over pi. Now, now you're cooking with gas, this is plus, so that's zero. I think the answer is this. I will definitely go check that, and if I made a mistake here um, compared to their answer key, then I will redo this problem for you. Um, but let's see, how much more do we have? Okay, there's one more in this world. Um, and let's see how I do on this one without having read it first. Um, and then I'll do that last bit of his notes, which changes, yeah, estimating values. I'll, I'll make a, a separate video for this page. But let's look at this one. Okay, shown the domain of all real values of this on this interval, it has no holes, passes through each point exactly one time, and as, as theta increases, 
The graph passes through points labeled A, B, C, D in that order. So we start at A, we come to B, we go through C, we come to D, and we get back to A. Okay, I'm okay with that. And which of the following intervals is the average rate of change with respect to theta? R, average rate of change of R with respect to theta least. Oh, dear. Okay. Um... Okay, so I think what we're doing here is we're starting at an R value of, is that about three maybe? And then we probably have um, an R value of about three. That may be just zero. Odds are we started at zero, where our, our, our started up with a theta of zero. We come here by pi over two, and then we come back. Uh, we're into quadrant two. So did we go, oh, we got here by pi over two and then we got, we were still positive. This is a cardioid. So um, it looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So four, Four point five is that four point five? One, two, three and a half. Can I not count? You know what, you guys, let me go think about this one and not waste your time. So um, I will make a video with these last two after I have thought about this one for just a minute. And I will go check and make sure I was right on that. Um, this stuff is making me work. So um, I hope you practice also. Uh, good luck to you. Subscribe, come back, and we'll work through this together.